In the end, only Beck and Zack could come. Ash, on the other hand, couldn't be reached at all. All of my calls went straight to his voicemail. He's at it again, right here today. Gone the next day. Oh well, his loss. We have agreed to meet at a nearby cafe. The one I frequent with Becca because it's cheap and they oh, and they give away free bread around closing time. <laughs> Zarbuck's Coffee House. Mm. Was that with a C? Yes. Oh. Quaint. A little old fashioned, though looks a wee bit out of place amidst the, the city's tall buildings, but we love it all the same. Much like its facade, the interior carries an antiquated charm to it. Vintage art pieces and a row of shelves boasting in an extensive collection of books cover the walls. <laughs> Ooh. It's like you sound like a radio Ooh. DJ. It would have been nice to hang out here for a couple hours on end, but even on a weekend, this place is still packed with people. Thankfully, Beck and Zack have already found seats and are engaged in some casual chatter when I arrive. It's strange seeing two, the two of them without Ash accompanying the other. They've never been particularly close. Sure, they talk when they meet, laugh at the same things when there's something funny, but there's distance. Kind born purely out of differing interests. That or Zack's simply afraid of Becca. That's not impossible, and I wouldn't blame him if he is. Listen to that flute. He might be the tallest in our group, but everyone knows that means nothing against Becca's temper. Even I am a little scared of her. Zack! Becca! Well, you seem to be in a better mood today. What happened? I know that smile, Belle. Come on, still! D don't rush me! Let's She's order so... food first, okay? Defensive all the time. Isabella? It's so annoying. <laughs> Isn't it? Well, I suppose. Uh, yeah. Short version, yeah. A little mm. bit. I suppose Becca's very uh, aggressive, though. We're just very pissed off, anyway. <laughs> not right now. She's not. Look at that face. She's scheming it's something. Playful. She's scheming it's something. It's a nice little smirk. You, you, didn't you say she's like probably gonna be an annoying bitch when she first showed up on the screen? Screen. Yeah, but I mean, Isabella's also annoying. Everyone's annoying, just in different ways. Mm -hmm. Waitress comes by to take our order. Ooh. On a normal day, me and Becca will order a hearty serving of their special vegetarian stovies. Zach takes anything with a good helping of meat, sausages, or potatoes in it. Mm -hmm. But today's. A good day. Great, even. It's not wrong to include a little, right? Indulge. Indul include. <laughs> include. Include. Indul indulge. It's not wrong to indulge a little, right? Today's special. For the three of us. Even the person jotting down our order looks surprised at today's meal's choice. She writes it, nevertheless, and leaves without a comment. Becca furs her eyebrows, her mouth halfway open, ready to let loose what's likely a string of reprimands. Don't worry, it's my treat. The glare she sends my way reminds me of the one I received from Mama when I punched a kid bullying my younger brother 18 years ago. Naturally, I never did it again after she made me apologize the next day. But Becca's far from being my mom. A small sheepish grin is enough to turn that frown into a delighted sigh that's defeated. I could not read. <laughs> and you're watching Christopher playing with the Moto Chan this game. Okay, moving on. Food arrives in the middle of a funny story from Zach, putting the rest of the conversation on hold as we are each served our order. It isn't anything fancy. Oh. Pan-roasted sea bass with citrus dressed asparagus and a portion of mashed potatoes on the side. Or at least that's what the Daily Special board so, says. This isn't fancy? I mean, it's it's like a tiny portion on a small white plate and it it's all like piled tiny. on each other. It doesn't look this that is fancy. Tiny. 
It looks quite delicious. Oh, that's asparagus. Yeah. Citrus okay. dressed. Let's see what's next. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> that's all they got. <laughs> I never did pay any attention to it whenever I come here, since they price whatever's written way above what I'm willing to spend on food on a single day. Oh good. I'm so hungry I think I'm dying. You're always hungry. Hey! Not all the time. Let me guess. You skipped breakfast again. Not on purpose. I may have overslept by a few seconds today. Right then. Stop stalling, Isabella. What's this about? Let us say, Rebecca, she wouldn't be inviting us out if it wasn't worth hearing out. Well, we're waiting. I'm treating you guys to a once in a century thing. Century? She's she's a pretty bad real estate agent, I guess. An expectant grin breaks out on my face. Except... I'm sorry, say that again. And this is important because... Becca only raises an eyebrow at me, while Zack appears like he didn't get the punchline to another lame joke Ash made, and is desperately searching for someone to explain it. (laughs) (laughs) Ash is not here, so we should celebrate. (laughs) Uh, The top one, obviously. Mm Mm-hmm, yeah. The second one doesn't even make sense. Well, the second one, I think, is just going to piss Becca off. (laughs) <laughs> I just see the second one ending with Becca being pissed off. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't answer their question, so I would do the first one. Yeah. Because she's like, oh, bummer. Maybe I should rephrase it. Mm-hmm. My instant noodle days are over. Okay. Let me do that again. Guess what, guys? I'm paying. I sold the house. As the news sinks in, their expression goes from sheer bewilderment to utter surprise. That's more like it. You heard me right, ladies and gentlemen. As of today, I'm Maria Isabella Grace Cruz Santos and free from my instant noodle binge. Seriously? Hold it, Belle. You sold the house? Yep. Which house is this? In Anslum Village? The one with the open house yesterday? The one and only. Come on, Becca. I know you've got a better memory than that. Oh. Oh, wow. Uh, That's... She lets out a hum. Although she's nodding, she gives the impression of someone who has heard something unbelievable and is still forcing her brain to absorb it. Did she think we wouldn't be able to sell it? Fine, you didn't think you would be able to sell it. Yeah, have some faith in me, Becca. Am I not your best friend or what? You don't believe me? The words tumble out of my mouth before I could stop them. I've been trying to avoid bringing up yesterday's little spat, and judging from the looks on their faces, it seems they are too. I am so conflicted right now. Me and my stupid mouth. Do, oh. we, do we try and save all of these dumb kids or do we let all the dumb kids get wet? Uh. <laughs> I'm sure it ain't the way you're thinking, Bella. No, no, I do believe you. But don't you think the sale happened a bit too fast? The open house Does it matter? started yesterday and now you already have a buyer? It happens from time to time. Yeah, but look, I'm happy for you. Just yesterday, you've been really worried where to get money for your dad's new treatment. And now, all of a sudden, you have something. That's how things work. What if the sale doesn't push through, or I don't know, they're a fraud, or they suddenly back out? Isn't it a little too early to celebrate? Rebecca does have a point, Bella. If you haven't closed the deal yet, there's still a chance they'll go back on it. Mm, They don't seem like it to me. The lady appeared to really want it, and she approached me without even finishing the tour. Pressured me into it, more like. But I'm not going to tell Becca about that. Knowing her, she'd only worry. And she already hired someone to handle the house's interior design. And, not also to mention, we already got an envelope of money. Right. So. Hmm. You're joking. Who would do that? The rights, apparently. It's actually pretty funny. She's a bit too excited to get the property. She forgot to buy it. At any rate, they've already signed the agreement today, so it's just a matter of time. And don't tell anyone about this, but Ma'am Hannah also gave us something extra. Something as in... As Coke. in... is <laughs> why I can treat you two to a free meal. I'm more surprised you accepted it. She didn't really give us a choice in the matter. So don't lose sleep over this, okay? The couple really want the house. If Rose didn't stop them, 
they'd likely have paid up front for it yesterday. That's despite the legends, too. I even tried to show them the letter. But nope. I want this house, darling. Go take all our money. You don't really think they'd believe that, do you? I'm pretty sure for them, those are just rumors as well. No one is that superstitious in this day and age, Belle. Oh, well, there's you. Right. You know what? I'll just eat all of these by myself. I begin to gather their plates to my side, the food in each still untouched. I laugh, oh, a laugh almost escapes my mouth with the way Zack's expression quickly changes to disappointment. Becca's hand interrupts me just as I'm about to pull her plate closer to me. <laughs> I'm kidding! <laughs> Don't go all pouty on me again! I feel like Isabella is so dramatic. That's what bothers me. Yeah. I'm just concerned you'll get hurt if this doesn't happen. I know uh, how badly you want to close this deal for your papa. I don't know if because we're playing as Bella that it makes me... Cause you're right, she is. But I don't know, like... Becca strikes me as dramatic, but actually you're right, not as dramatic as Isabel. Mm -hmm. I even said her name wrong. <laughs> Isabella. Isabel. <laughs> Isabella. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's gonna be fine now, though, with the money. They don't know yet. I think I'll call them tomorrow. Let them know things will be easier. Mama said this morning he's showing progress with the new treatment, too. It's just a matter of time. I allow myself to smile, genuine and uninhibited. It's strange talking about this with other people, even those you have known who, what? <laughs> Even those who have known you long enough. Thank you. But today, things simply feel a whole lot lighter with them here. Lunch passes in an enjoyable fashion. A laugh here, a playful jab there, but most of it is spent on catching up and telling stories about whatever's keeping us busy these days. Something we couldn't afford to do the day before, taking into account what happened. <laughs> Even Becca surprisingly chatty. Is there something in this sea bass we ate? Zack, though, appears less energetic. I feel like I sound just like them. Hmm. Hmm. You think you adopt... Shit. <laughs> <laughs> What's the... You think... You think the accent is your ally? You merely adopted the accent. I was born in it. No, you weren't. <laughs> Molded by it. Ugh. I never spoke American English till I was. Um, you never. <laughs> I don't remember the quote. I can't. <laughs> I can't uh, parody it well. Mm. Shit. While he's far from being the life of the party, he's definitely not the type to keep quiet in a conversation with his friends. Hmm. Maybe you're not his friend. Hmm. Think about that. Hmm. <sighs> Apart from a few inputs, he's been silent the entire time. If Becca notices... Are you sure you're not feeling under the weather, Zachary? Huh? W no, I I'm okay. He's just pissed we didn't pick the priest. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, no worries, Rebecca. Doesn't sound okay to me. It's... It's it's okay. I might be feeling a little bummed out today. But, but I'm, I'm sure this will pass. Is it about the reviews this morning? Oh. A pained expression crosses Zack's face, and almost immediately, Becca retreats in her inquiry, as though the man's look is enough of an answer for her. I look between the two of them. Did I miss something? What happened this morning? Did I stumble on a big secret? It's so dense. Uh, yeah. This is why I don't like waking up late. You heard about those, huh? Oh. Sorry, I just happened to check on some sites this morning. Nah, nah, it's... it's... It's a very sensitive topic in the first place. I, I should have expected it. What reviews? <laughs> Becca glances at Zack, her motions unsure, eyes asking for his consent on the matter. Although there's a small desire to keep asking on my part, I don't dare voice it out. With Zack, it has always been better to wait, let him speak on his own. Becca too, to some extent, although with her explosions of temper are more common. In the end, he simply answers with a shift of his shoulders, gesturing for her to go on with a tilt of his head. It's his movie. That doesn't explain anything. Oh my god. Stop dangling the information.
animation. That's Chill out. <laughs> Are you so dense? <laughs> What's that one meme? You dense motherfucker. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Haven't you seen that? From The Incredibles, the, the bad guy, it's just him going, Arr! and then... It's the text. It, you've never seen oh, it. Oh, you're talking about a meme? No, I haven't seen yeah, the gif. I've not, I've not the seen meme. the gif. No, uh, you just said the thing or something. No, I didn't. Whatever. We'll replay it back. Whatever. <laughs> oh, anyways. Zachary, I'm not the one supposed to be telling her about this. It's still your documentary. Is it something bad? Obviously. Not bad per se. You, you, you guys don't need to dwell on it much. Bad? Listen here! I wouldn't trivialize what those bowheads wrote if I were you! They're ruining other people's jobs! Oh. From how her tone rises in anger, it seems like she's the one slighted and not Zack. <laughs> a snicker escapes me, which I promptly stamp down as soon as she sends me a hard look, because I'm a fucking idiot! Wow. This isn't a laughing matter, Isabella! Some bow bag just insulted him! Calm down, Rebecca. Those are just reviews, and it happens a lot. Yeah, don't read comments. <sighs> I do not care about you two, but calling the entire film an out-and-out out drivel, you're better off watching an educational kids' TV show, and worst one and a half hour of my life, among other things, isn't exactly a critique any decent movie reviewer would say. Is, is she a, a bit Scottish? I don't know what the first three words are supposed to say. I don't... I do not care, I believe. Or I don't know. Ken. I think it was care. Ken. I didn't Ken. Yeah, that's gotta be I don't care. Or I don't... Maybe She's it is like, I don't know. Yeah, I was gonna say and I don't it's care definitely, about I, you It's too. definitely I do not. I do not I don't know. Yeah, I guess I don't know. Makes sense. Yeah, I guess she just might have some, might have some Scottish in her. Unless she's saying, like, IDK. No. IDK. No. no, that's <laughs> that's gay. That's some Gaelic there. If you could call that a critique, did we even watch the same film? Well, maybe I ain't cut out for it. Better stick with my photography or something. Oh, Zach. If nothing else, this helped me open my eyes to what I can and can't do. You're giving up. It wasn't a question. It was just something experimental I did on my free time anyway. It's no big deal. But it got into the festival. Mm-hmm. But she worked on it for months. Doesn't look like it matters for those people. Don't Ooh. say that! Who cares what they think? <laughs> My palm strikes the table, setting the tableware on top, clinking against each other. I didn't even notice when I rose from my seat. She's pissed. But here I am, chest heaving, looking down mm -hmm. at him in the same manner a teacher would at an unruly oh. student. She is not pissed because she didn't say fucking. Ah. And she didn't say fucking twice. Yeah. <laughs> Becca's probably proud. I didn't mean to yell, but there are some things people like Zach aren't supposed to say. How exasperating. Who says that? He, of all people, should know. It's just a review. Finally. Except they're pretty well-known critics. Why does that matter? They aren't the ones calling the shots on this. Isn't that why they have a committee? Right, Becca? An amused gleam is in her eyes when I turn to her. What does she find so entertaining here? Help me here. Your friend's about to quit his passion for a petty reason. I haven't read what those people wrote about his work, but a few scathing words shouldn't be enough to discourage someone. I should know. After all, I'm... Failing means you're playing, Zack. Uh, not that I'm saying it's bad. I've seen it from start to finish, and I know for myself what you created isn't something people should scoff at. I don't know anything about filming or photography. Hell, I don't have an inkling of artistry in me except for those doodles I make for class. But I know what I watched. She was the only one of us that watched it. Yeah. <laughs> Look at Isabella. It's not every day you see her all riled up like this. Whatever. I'm about to say... Whatever I'm about to say gets lost in my tongue as a flush of embarrassment blooms across my face. It was a heat of the moment thing. And anyway, I'll be very angry with you if you quit. What about the exhibit? What exhibit? I was just gonna say that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Classified information. What? Even if I bring you your favorite tonight? What? 
Hmm? Nope, not a chance. Oh, come on. I thought we aren't supposed to have secrets. That's why God gave us hands. What? I don't know. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> So much of this last 60 seconds have gone completely over my head. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Burst of laughter comes from Zach. Thanks, you two. Uh, I might need some time alone to myself for a while. Just to think about things, how I'll go from here, that sort of stuff. Hey, I'm not quitting, Bella. Don't give me that face. There's no face at all. Only a poorly imitation of puppy dog eyes, if you could call this one. You promise? I'll be damned if I break any promise I make to you guys. Besides, you're right. It's too early to say anything right now. What's night ain't for another week? And that's all the answer I need from him. As sentimental as it sounds, there's fulfillment in knowing another person you know won't take the same path you've walked. <clears throat> it's not like it's over for me, though. I still have time. I can still come back. Do my own thing. Do what I really want to do. Surely, once Papa recovers, once I'm done with everything... Instead of my bag, my phone buzzes unexpectedly, breaking the pleasant afternoon lull. The screen shows Rose. Hey, Isabel. You at the office? Ha ha. Very funny, Rose. I'm hanging up. <laughs> Don't, I'm kidding. Because she called her Isabel instead of Isabella. Oh, okay. That, yeah, that one <laughs> went over my like, head too. What? <laughs> BRC says the floor plan copies are ready for Miss McCullough to pick up. Me, Miss McCullough? Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> she states that as if it already explains everything. Then, out of the blue, she launches into a long rant about the awful state of Luxford Streets. All of which she says in a single breath, and I can barely keep up to make out a single word. I stay quiet, if only to avoid the next object of her frustration. She's similar to Becca in that regard. I'm stuck in horrendous traffic right now. Bloody stupid drivers. When she has finally ran out of things to complain about and stops, what she says next still has none of what I'm hoping to hear from her. Just a quick mumbled plea for me to come meet the rights interior designer in her stead and... Anyway, I'll leave it to you. Classic Rose. She ends the call without even asking for my input. The sky is cloudless and the noontime sun is beating down on the hard concrete when we leave the cafe. It's far from unbearable, but it's enough to put most people in a fickle mood. Or make them vulnerable to catching something. No wonder we have staff members that going AWOL lately. Not to mention my boss's mercurial moods. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I want our usual cloudy weather back. <laughs> For all the gripes and the unpredictable weather, though, the streets of Luxburn remain constantly busy. The hurried tapping of shoes against the pavement and the inane clatter coming from the lunchtime crowd fill the humid afternoon air. A small reminder of the things we still have to do, regardless of how much I want to return to the comfort of my bed. Back to Briar Realty for me. Zach to a meeting with a magazine publisher featuring luxury houses and Becca to her lesson plans and books at home. But more than once, I catch her sneaking a longing, gl longing glance over something displayed in a window shop. Did you want to buy something? Maybe I can get it for, for Christmas. I turned my head at the last shop she checked out. A fleeting glimpse. The world stills. She looks at me, eyes hollow, gaze piercing and born into my very soul, like a set of chains to keep my whole body still. There are no shadows or whispers this time, only a plea, a hum, low and distinct. Indistinct. <laughs> Compelling me, beckoning me. Intent on dragging me to the void beyond the glass. I don't dare move. 
My heart hammers against my ribs, each beat, every thump, screaming at me to look away and make a run for it. But I can't. I couldn't. All of my limbs feel heavy while my own breathing strains in the face of her calls. Leave me alone. Her mouth is stretched in a grin, wide and unpleasant. The panic building in my chest forces me to take a tentative step back. I try not to stare at the decaying flesh, the blood streaming from the gaping wounds on her arm or the nailless fingers. I don't want this. Not like this. Not after I got what I want for Papa. No, no, stop. Leave me alone. Her face contorts and she lets out a wail, sharp and utterly unforgiving. Rage. There's only hatred and bitterness, as if the very notion of turning away from her is an offense in itself. Please! I don't want this! <laughs> Before I know it, I'm stumbling backwards, and my own throat hoarse. She's gonna get hit by a car! <gasps> my own throat hoarse from the screams I don't even notice it already it, coming out of my mouth. Oh. The back of my feet catches on a loose stone, sending me sprawling to the ground. The resulting pain completely jolts me out of the haze, blurring my mind. For a little while, my surroundings appear unfamiliar until Becca's face swims into my vision. A look of concern is on her face, and her hands are gripping my arms tight. Even Zack appears beside himself with worry while he stands behind her, acting as a shield against the small crowd of onlookers already forming around us. What happened? Bella, you okay? My mouth opens and closes, but nothing comes out. The words refuse to form. On impulse, I sneak a swift glance at the wind display window. She's gone. Yet the foreboding feeling hasn't left me. My hands are shaking as I push myself off the ground, my weakened limbs relying solely on reflex and muscle memory. Something icy has made its home at the pit of my stomach. I want to throw up. Anything to get the wretched sensation out. You are screaming! Zack, call someone! No, don't. I'm good. I'm good. I'm just going crazy. I need... I need to get to the office. Rose, the floor plans. Someone's going to pick it up. I, I'll see you later. Be careful. Don't stand up yet. Stay put, Isabella. Zack, you watch over her for me. I'll call for... Uh, for someone. I attempt to smile to put her at ease, but it'll likely come off as a grimace. Gently, I push her hands off my shoulders. My knees are still trembling, but I can't stand. But I can stand. But I can. Ooh. Leave. Leave me. Stay away. Away. <laughs> Humidity stifling. Everyone's stares are unnerving, and Beck and Zack's concerns are suffocating. I don't want to be here. No more. Sorry. <laughs> I break into a run. Still messy. Still five o'clock. <laughs> I wish I hadn't left my bed this morning. Here, with only the occasional drips of water on the sink and the whirring of the fan blades to keep me company, it's easy to fall into a cycle of negative thinking. But even with the clutter to keep me company, the room still feels a whole lot bigger than usual. I hug my knees closer as a group passes outside. Loud. So loud. If only there was a way to tune everything out to keep my head from replaying every image, every sound of her. Her screams, her awkward gait as she reaches for me, her bone-chilling smile, her pleas for... Enough! That's enough. A shiver passes over me. Though it's not from the hair still head hanging damp against my back, nor the draft that enters the room from the windows I've left wide open. My gaze shifts over to the letter, sitting on the coffee table. Its edges flutter innocuously as the wind touches it. Funny how an ordinary looking piece of paper can bring this much trouble. 
The impulse to throw it away or rip it to pieces is still there. I can easily do it. But after that, what? You know, I just realized. What's that? On every H, there's two dots below it. Font. What is this font? I mean, it's obviously supposed to be handwritten. Supposedly, except for all the letters look basically exactly the same. Mm hmm. It's called a font. But it's supposed to be handwritten, and so they wouldn't look that similar. It's called a font. No! <laughs> no! That's not how handwriting works. They should all have subtle differences, but they really don't. Like, every single H is going to have those two little dots below it. Hmm. People don't write like that. Obviously, this curse is from the future and it's gone back in time. How so? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just... Shush! Will she leave me? What about those people who have already seen it? Will they be okay? <laughs> no. This uncertainty gnaws at me. Knowing that she's real and might also go after people I care about. I just wish someone would listen. Believe me. The abrupt break in the silence nearly makes me jump out of my skin. Blindly, I fish out my phone from under the mess of papers and cushions, where I've carelessly thrown it before taking a shower hours ago. Ash's name flashes brightly on the screen. Is he calling because of this afternoon? Thank you so much for spamming my inbox, scaredy cat. Hey, Ash. What's wrong? I just had a long day. The couple who bought the house wanted us to finish processing the papers within the week. It's a little hectic, but we'll manage. Really? You sold it? Don't sound so surprised. I told you, you don't stand a chance. The rights won't take no for an answer. You've been on the losing end from the very start. Ha! Whoever said I was interested in the house in the first place? But you said... <coughs> Despite his light tone, his snicker only comes off as annoying to my ears. I have to fight the urge to end the call right then and there. Oh my goodness. Stupid Ash. Ashhole. You're such an ass. Uh. An ashhole. <laughs> and just so you know, I'm not treating you to a separate celebration. Or ever. No, that's just unfair. And here I was looking something up for you. Didn't you say you wanted to talk to Andrew? I pause. I did say that, but I didn't think he'd actually go through the trouble, considering how much he scoffed at the whole topic in the first place. Is he... is he okay with that? Totally. Besides, I need to ask him about something. I might as well do it soon. What do you say you come with me tomorrow morning? Well, there's no harm in it, I suppose. I've got a free day anyway. Great, I'll just pick you up. Don't oversleep. Don't compare me to you. I'm not the one who sleeps like a rock. Well. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Another round of chuckles come from him. Oh, I will live for the day he'll stop making fun of me. Just wait, you, you, you asshole. <laughs> asshole. As I'm about to end the call, he clears his throat. And, uh, Isabella? Yes, Ash? This sudden defiant tone sends my eyebrows shooting up to my hairline. Is the world ending today? He loves me. Did you forget something? He's gonna Are say you, never mind. Do you think you... We... <clears throat> never mind. Good night. <sighs> he hangs up instantly. She's gonna be like, what was that about? <laughs> That was weird. Cr rude. Completely rude. I didn't even get to thank him. The busy tone, though muffled, echoes through the receiver. No one is saying this will work. Even I am doubtful it will. But right now, I'll take anything. Anything to get out of this nightmare. Sleep comes easier tonight. And for the first time in a long time, I dream of clear skies, of unrestrained laughter from children playing in the streets, of small, cramped dwellings. To an outsider, the sight does not paint a pretty picture. 
However, this is home to me. 